Okay, good morning. We're going to uh, open our meeting for the Board of Commissioners uh, November the 22nd, day before Thanksgiving. So that's probably why not very many people are here this morning. They're traveling to get ahead of cruddy weather to, to get to their Thanksgiving uh, uh, destinations. Okay, George, would you lead us in the flag this morning, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to wait till the height of the traffic. Pardon? I want to wait till the traffic's the worst. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, this is a public meeting, of course. Uh, we have two hearings this morning, actually three hearings. Uh, two here at the beginning and one at the end. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, Commissioner Elfin, awards and recognitions? Yes, we do have a, a, a card that's come to us. It said, uh, Dear Mr. Elfring, it should be addressed to all, all commissioners. Thank you, and all citizens of Umatilla County for that matter. Thank you for bumping our livestock at the Umatilla County Fair. It was greatly <laughs> appreciated, and we would love to, for you to come next year. That's signed by the Pilot, Pilot Rock Woolly Wranglers. Okay. So. It's always good to get those from the kids. It is. Um, minutes from our previous meeting, Doug, are those? There aren't any. Okay. And then uh, additions to the agenda this morning? None that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, this is a time point in the uh, meeting. If you are not scheduled to be on our agenda, and our agenda is up there, you see part of it anyway. If you're not part of the agenda, this is a point for you to make public comment this morning. So with that, is there anyone that wants to speak to the board uh, and make a public comment? Yes, if you'd come forward. Yes, yes, that's, it's part of the agenda. Okay, uh, anyone else, a public comment? Okay, moving on then, uh, our regular business, uh, the first item is the uh, ambulance service uh, areas, uh, there's applications and recommendations. At this point in time, this is a public hearing, so I am going to open the hearing and ask for a staff report. Okay. Morning, Commissioners. My name is Tom Roberts, Umatilla County Emergency Manager, and I am also the individual responsible for administering the ambulance service area plan and as such the liaison between the Commission and the Ambulance Service Area Committee. The ambulance service uh, applications for franchise were sent out um, following a six-month extension. Uh, it was graciously awarded by this board so that we had time to uh, revamp our ambulance service area plan. Those applications have been received and reviewed by the Ambulance Service Area Committee. It is uh, the Ambulance Service Area Committee's recommendation that we um, proceed as follows. Um, we received one application for franchise for Ambulance Service Area 1, which is currently serviced by Pendleton Fire Department. The application was by Pendleton Fire Department and Ambulance Service. Um, the only um, condition that we would recommend being applied to that application um, would be that um, they uh, complete a process that is currently in the works with St. Anthony Hospital, um, whereas they need to have a, it's a new requirement under our new plan, a plan in place for um, the, uh, the, the inner transfer uh, capabilities between hospitals. Um, as you recall, one of the changes we made to this uh, current edition of the Ambulance Service Aid Plan is that ambulance services that will be tra providing transport between facilities will need to have a plan in place to ensure that they can provide timely service um, for, the, for said transfers. A plan was already put in place in Hermiston 
uh, between Good Shepherd Hospital and, and Fire District Number One, and that has been an in process uh, uh, between St. Anthony's and Pendleton. And so the committee believes that in good faith, uh, because it's a new recommendation, that we allow um, them until the end of this calendar year to complete that process. But we they are actively work pursuing and working on it. As far as ASA number two goes, we had one application for service, and that was uh, the sole applicant was Umatilla County Fire District number one uh, with their ambulance service, and, and um, the committee recommends that um, that we award franchising to to them with no caveats. The Milton Free Water Ambulance Service area, also ASA number four, there was one application for franchise for ASA number four. Is the recommendation that uh, franchising be uh, provided to uh, Instant Resource Enterprises Incorporated, which is the current franchise holder? Um, one application was received for ASA 5, which is the Athena Western area, um, and it is also the recommendation of the committee that franchises be awarded to East Umatilla County Ambulance Area Health District for service in, in ASA number 5. Um, ASA number six, there was no formal application applied for ASA number six. The uh, committee has, has met and discussed options with how to proceed forward. This is the Mill Creek area. And in discussions with the current ambulance service provider, we've uh, uh, been able to uh, determine that they were not 100% sure at this point in time that they would be able to uh, to apply their, their services to a full five-year term, um, but they are willing to work with us for coverage until either they resolve um, that question mark on their end or we find an alternative option. So in coordination with um, County Council, we uh, determined that the best course of action would be to extend their current um, agreement on a year-by-year -year basis until or until we uh, find a permanent solution for that. And so, therefore, that is the recommendation to the Board of Commissioners on ASA 6 for that franchise. And then ASA 7, which is the tribes, um, we received an application from the Tribal Fire Department and Ambulance Service, and we recommend franchising of, of, of that. Any questions? Hey, on questions from colleagues? Uh, just a question on ASA 6. Are yes. they willing to accept an extension? Uh, their representative indicated as much that they were they were reaching out to everybody impacted by the by the uh, <clears throat> potential issues that are that that they're they're looking at uh, needing to resolve and um, and and are willing to work with each of those providers until a resolution is found and so yes I believe that's the the short well, answer ESA one you don't anticipate any difficulties with uh an inter-facility agreement with St. Anthony? I do not. In fact, uh, the day after the Ambulance Service Area Committee met, they were supposed to have a meeting between the two entities to look over their draft and, and do some more work on it. They've been actively <coughs> pursuing that since the adoption of the current ASA plan. So it's been a work in progress, and I anticipate that that will be completed very soon, most likely by the end of the year, as required. I have nothing further. Uh, Doug, can, do we want to bring in the possibility of the future of six right now? Well, I think the way it's proposed is just to have it on an annual basis renewable at their option, and um, so that uh, for up to five years. So it is covered under the order. Okay. Because I I will there's some other things that I will go ahead and look into, and I've shared that with our county council specifically okay. just on uh, number six. So. Okay, and and I have a few other options that we can discuss as well okay. um, going, moving forward, and hopefully we'll find a permanent resolution soon. Okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to open this hearing up to the public. Any comments from the public on this uh, order that we're going to consider? Okay, I will now close the hearing. Uh, and we can deliberate, and you have an order for us. Yes. Okay. Looks okay. pretty. Looks pretty straightforward to me. I, I, uh, I would move the adoption of the franchise agreements 
with the recommendations requirements that have been set and I would as part of that motion move that we adopt order BCC 2017-071. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded that we approve order BCC 2017-071. Uh, uh, further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, uh, next up is the ambulance plan amendment, and uh, that is also a public hearing, so at that time I will open this uh, for a public hearing, and uh, I am ready for a staff report. Thank you, Commissioners. Again, Thomas Roberts, um, and I'm here to discuss with you um, some changes that have been requested by the state for uh, for adoption of our ambulance service area plan. Um, I'd like to note that we received a, uh, a letter back um, regarding our, our plan um, as, as adopted from the uh, Oregon Health Authority, EMS and trauma systems. Um, I was very pleased with this letter. While it had a couple of uh, minor changes that needed to be made, most of it in... Um, in language and in definition, um, the the bulk of the plan as as written was was uh, very well received by the state, and they were very happy. In fact, in talking with one of them, uh, they indicated that they would they would really like to maybe use our plan as a template moving forward for others to use in 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 their uh, adoption. So I, I was very happy with that. And and commissioners, I'd also like to point out um, I've received a lot of assistance from county council as well as from one individual in particular, um, that's our, our GIS coordinator, uh, Tracy Deal, and I would just like to, uh, to publicly say thank you to her because she's put a lot of time into this as well and has done a fantastic job. One of the items that was stated in the letter was, was that they really like the maps. They had never seen uh, that good a quality of a, of a service area map before, so I want to make sure that she gets recognition for that. Um, in the letter, it, it recommended that we make a couple minor changes. Um, uh, to definition, uh, EMT paramedic, that was that was a mistake. They are now referred to exclusively as paramedic, and so we made an adjustment in the plan as such and, uh, and have uh, referenced um, um, OAR 333-265-0000, number 25 for that. Um, we also had a definition change. Um, Certified first responder is actually now referred to at the state level as emergency medical responder, so we made that change and and also referenced OAR in that new definition. The um, um, response times that we had in place for Frontier were a uh, federal uh, time. However, our local area trauma advisory board plan actually has a a tighter time, and so they recommended that we adopt the, the two-hour frontier response time versus the four-hour and 28 minutes. So we did that, and so now our frontier response time uh, will reflect that, that requirement as well as all of our maps. We had those adjusted accordingly. Um, mutual aid agreements, uh, we did change some language reg uh, in regards to mutual aid agreements in, in, the, uh, in the new plan. Some of the strengths that were that were uh, uh, recognized by the state. Excellent narrative description to the ASAs and, and the GIS maps with response time boundaries. Um, the extra language that, that was removed, so it wasn't, it was very to the point. Um, good narrative and alternative considerations to uh, reducing response times, including our cross county coverage. Um, we had, we were, uh, Recognized for an excellent description of the ASA holder's responsibilities for the pre-range and our facility transports. Again, that had to do with the requirement for having a plan and put into place so that we can ensure uh, uh, that the quality of service was there for those services. Um, there was uh, clear requirements for the emergency communications and systems access as well as a uh, clear description of who the ASA administrator would be before it, would, it was... Uh, rather unclear and we define that as myself as the emergency manager or any future counterpart. Um, under the improvements to consider, there were a couple of items that we made some changes to in the plan. Um, we, we did address the uh, cross count county boundaries 
into uh, by Legrand into ASA one as well as um, by currently Walla Walla down into ASA six, and we just did that by um, uh, stating in the plan that they would be um, responding down into along Mill Creek Road or uh, Highway 204. Um, the um, again the process for um, uh, I'm sorry the uh, Quality, uh, we, we improved some language there uh, for the uh, county plan for quality improvement just to, in, uh, to to make that a little more clear on how we were going to proceed forward and ensure compliance with the plan. Um, and then we also improved some languages in regards to um, dispatch and how the, the quality improvement was going to, to be maintained and monitored on their end of the, the overall system times. And then the very last one, um, I actually uh, disagree with um, because it is a, an, an older issue, and that is the Athena Western ASA 5, um, where they discuss that they're operating under staff variants and, and, and are in need of uh, repetitive mutual aid requests from assisting ASAs. Um, I believe that that ha has already been addressed um, through their, their reorganization, and, and um, subsequently we've been monitoring their response times and their numbers, and and I believe that they are well within compliance at this point in time. So I'm going to address that uh, back to the state um, on that one. Um, so with that, um, that would cover most of the, the changes that we are requesting that uh, be made to the, the ambulance service area plan, and. Um, and I would request the Board of Commissioners uh, consider adoption of the changes as drafted. Okay, questions? Uh, Tom, one of the questions, I, you referred to Union County and Walla Walla County. What's the agreement, and I know we have one, but mm -hmm. between uh, Morrill County and that west end of, of that area one we have a multi-agency multi-county uh, agreement okay and so it's all covered under the the one mutual aid agreement between Morrow all the way to Union and up so and we're going to be revising that mutual aid agreement very soon it's it's almost due for uh, uh, for revision so we'll be okay. taking a close look at that and and this really doesn't not directly uh, related to the S A S. ASA, excuse me, but a, a question, and I would refer back to uh, our law enforcement folks, uh, and specifically Jim, uh, we do have an ongoing law enforcement mutual aid with all three counties, Union, Morrow, and Walla Walla. Do we have anything set up with uh, Benton County? No. Okay. That may be something we could look at in the future. Okay. Because they're just across the bridge. So. Okay. Uh, other questions? At this time, I will open this portion of the hearing open to the public. Are there any public uh, comments or anyone from the public want to uh, have questions? Okay, I am going to close the hearing uh, for deliberation, and we do have an order. We do. There are actually two things two. that the board will need to adopt. Besides, one will be the order, and the other will be the actual plan itself. Okay. So, so Mr. Chair, I move the we adopt the revised plan and adopt Ordinance 2017-15. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt order number 2017-15. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And then the second one. Okay, that was the revised plan. That was the revised plan. Okay. We did that. All right. Uh, <clears throat> with that, let's move on. Uh, this is a point in time. This is not a public <coughs> hearing, but we did want public here for comments. Uh, this is in relation to uh, the Edwards Feedville intersection. I know we have some people here that <coughs> want to make comments, so if you would just start moving forward, and we have some uh, seats up here. Uh, so anyone that wants to comment on that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's and, how they are the pictures. And and the process is when when you speak, you introduce yourself and tell us who you are and your address for the record. So either one of you that would like to go first. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Heidi Carver. My address is 78368 North Loop Road in Stanfield. Um, my husband was involved in one of those motor vehicle accidents in September 20th of 2016. Um, I do believe that if there was a four-way intersection put in place there for a stop sign, that that accident would not have happened. Um, I have a neighbor out there that was also involved in a accident in 2014. Um, both of these accidents that I'm speaking about were fatalities. There were a total of three fatalities, and my husband went into the dash, he's six foot eight, and so therefore on impact, his knee shattered the dash and it shattered his tibial plateau. He is still dealing with injuries from that accident. Um, they're gonna be lifelong. And I have been in contact with the family that the fatality was occurred and that family, since the passing of the mother, has basically dissolved. They have family issues. The other passenger in the accident was critically injured. He was life flighted to the Portland area in an ICU for 10 days. Um, he is on <coughs> medications for depression. Uh, there was an accident there on the 9th of November that little gal, to my knowledge, is still in the hospital with very bad injuries, a shattered pelvis. Um, they took out an ovary. They took out her spleen. And there again, if any of these accidents, there was a four-way stop, it wouldn't have happened because the odds of two, two parties running the same, same stop sign at the same time is pretty slim. Um, I have an email from EMS of the list of accidents. There have been 11 accidents there in two years. Nine of the 11 are with injuries, multiple extrications. And I know myself and I know Angie, we all have young kids that are starting to drive. And I just feel that if that intersection was a four-way stop, you would decrease drastically the number of accidents that are there. And putting in a flashing light, I mean, you're, it's a high-speed road, so therefore having the cross, the people crossing, if there's an accident there, it's going to be a high-speed collision. It's going to be odds are a fatality or serious injuries. Um, I know that they put a stop sign in at Coe and Edwards after the fatality of, I believe it was the building inspector's wife. There has not been an accident at that intersection since that time. Um, so I guess that's that's really what I have to say is that I'm not sure why there has not been changes made to that intersection as of yet. Um, my husband and I are willing to pay for the um, signs to be put in, um, whatever we need to do, but that's a very dangerous intersection. Okay. Heidi, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, my name is Angie Connell. I live at 78748 Calhoun Lane, Stanfield, Oregon. That's all you need to know, right? Okay, so I, um, after the last accident, not the last one that just happened, but Heidi's, Dusty's, I, I remember calling and asking what needed to be done to have a four-way put in. Um, they said it was going to be in, you know, in the works, it was a process, there was a lot that needed to be done to put a four-way in. Okay, so I, I get that they're, I, well, actually I don't, I'm, I'm very confused. I don't understand why it's such a process. There's been three fatalities there in the matter of 
three years, two years, three years, three three years. years in the matter of three years. Um, I have teenage kids that drive up and down that road. I have a, a son who's going to be 16 here soon. The boy that hit the girl on November 9th is a 16-year-old boy who lives behind me. So this kid, I, I was actually, the girl that came to the stop sign, the 19-year-old who came, she stopped at that stop sign because she stopped for my son and I. So she stopped, and then I don't know if she, well, why she sat there, but she did because I kept looking in my rearview mirror. See, that intersection is something that we, that live out there, we try mm -hmm. to pay attention. So we try to slow down, we try to pay attention that people are going to run it because they run it all the time. But you're not understanding is that these accidents aren't just from people running the stop sign. It's people that do stop. This gal here stopped. I kept watching my rearview mirror. She had sat there until I was all the way down in that picture. I was all the way down to 395, and I, and I could not see her no longer. But she was still, until I was within over a mile out of sight, I could still see her sitting at the stop sign. So she was there for a very long time, and she was the one that got hit. There's also an obstruction. I don't know if you guys have actually been to this four-way or to this two-way stop and looked. It's kind of hard to see at times when you come to that stop sign. So I don't know if maybe she didn't see Jarrett come and that he was coming from the left. I don't know, but I do know that if there was a four-way, he would have slowed up to stop. That accident either would not have happened at all or it would have been minor injuries. It wouldn't have been a girl being life lighted. Um, it, the severity wouldn't have been there. Th that, that's, all, that's all all of us are trying to say, is that the severity of the accidents would be less if there was a four-way. And I guess we're just very confused as to why it is so difficult to get a four-way there. We're just asking for two more stop signs for the safety of everybody that lives out there. Um, I, I, I guess but we just have a lot of confusion <coughs> as to the why why there can be four ways put in other areas because the one on Co, it was right after the accident. As soon as there was a fatality there, the, the city of Stanfield put a four way up right away. Well, we had three and still nothing. And a bigger stop sign didn't help. Flashing lights are not going to help. The only thing that's going to help is if you slow traffic down. And the only way to do that, you can lower the speed on that highway, but there's on that road, but they're still not probably going to slow down. A four way stop will make people at least, even the ones that blow through, like Heidi said, what are the odds of two people blowing through the stop sign at the same time? It's pretty slim. I, I, just think, I just think life probably should be a little bit more of an importance here than whatever is stopping the four-way from going in, which I'm not sure what that is. Just a question. Your observation of the other car, was that the date of the accident or was that another case? No, it was that girl. She got in the wreck. Thank you. Yeah. Amber, thank you. Uh, your, both of you had questions. Well, why does it take so much to put a stop sign in? And there are all kinds of regulations and all kinds of, of laws relating to even what the county can do on putting a sign up, any type of a uh, regulatory sign, whether it's speed, whether it's stop sign. But I'm going to ask Tom Fellows, our public works director, if he would come up. I hate putting him on the. Sp <laughs> I hate putting him on the spot, but Tom has some pretty good uh, information on what has been done. Uh, I would tend to. Uh, I guess I would tend to agree. If everybody has to stop, then it's going to slow some things down. None of us, you, the commissioners, or anyone in this room, has any, we can never figure out why somebody thinks they have to blow a stop sign or drive 75 on a road that's posted 50. We're in an age of multitasking and being in a hurry, and but that doesn't stop somebody from being negligent or somebody having their mind on something else or maybe being on a foggy highway. Uh, I've lost family members in traffic accidents because of fog uh, and maybe negligence too. But uh, anyway, I, I get it. I understand. Tom? Uh, Tom Fellows, Umatilla County Public Works. Um, actually, what I came most prepared for was the commissioners had asked me to put together some cost estimates on different applications for 
for for the intersection and and I'll get into some of these other questions in a bit but I'd like to start there um, some of the um, some of the questions about different applications were were flashing lights um, flashing beacons in the middle of the intersection uh, for which would flash all four ways the uh, red and, and yellow uh, and these would be hooked into the uh, power grid so they, they would be hooked into Umatilla Electric um, the total cost of that the the um, hardware is is going to run about twenty five hundred dollars the actual installation because you have to use licensed uh, electricians and whatnot is going to be up around three thousand so we're we're looking in into the five to six thousand dollar range for flashing lights at at the intersection um, I was also asked about uh, single flashing signals on top of the signposts uh, just a single beacon on top of the signposts uh, those are primarily solar powered uh, you can get them the other way but but the recommendation from ODOT is to go with the solar ones uh, those run twenty five hundred dollars a pair so uh, if we're looking at at two directions we'd be looking about five thousand dollars for those um, each direction five thousand dollars total so you'd, you'd a pair a pair would be two in this direction and then two in this direction because you'd have have them on five thousand a pair right they would in in these these would go on top of the uh, stop ahead post not the actual stop sign so that it would be a pre-warning that to to them that be aware and on the uh, other side they would go there's actually an intersection post and these posts are approximately 500 feet from the intersection so so it would essentially be another another level of, of warning um, 500 feet prior to the intersection <coughs> um, act the actual stop signs um, if you made that a four-way stop that is by far the the least expensive and the signs the posts the installation on on those are going to be about a thousand dollars so that and, and then r quite frankly the most most safe application for that intersection would be roundabout uh, national studies are are very clear about this roundabouts not only save lives they make extremely minor collisions out of what normally would be uh, normally would be bad collisions the the downside is a roundabout adequate enough to, for um, farm equipment movement through that intersection is is going to be in the neighborhood of a million dollars <coughs> but that would be the by far the best so um, we um, uh, my staff actually did some some more traffic counts out there last week and I I they weren't there wasn't enough time to put together a full report on it so I, I went through this morning and, and um, uh, basically tried to tried to pick the data as best as I could and, and, and get some numbers the the traffic numbers for those for that intersection um, are relatively low in in the entire scheme of things the highest highest number is going to be on the um, uh, Edwards side and in Edwards on each side of the intersection runs about 1200 cars per day um, the MUTCD doesn't even um, hardly recognize numbers that low would you, would you explain to folks MUTCD is is the manual for uniform traffic control devices and the MUTCD is the standard that uh, the majority of the nation uh, operates under the, there are counties and, and cities that don't utilize the MUTCD they write their own standards but uh, by far uh, that is that is pretty much the standard of the nation so uh, and and that's what we what we try to operate all of our signage under in the county so um, in fact they uh, um, an inter intersection with under 800 cars per hour uh, doesn't hardly <coughs> hardly rate because it the the other interesting uh, fact about that is and and I don't know that 
that I totally agree with that, but um, it, <coughs> anything under five accidents in a six month period don't doesn't doesn't rise to the standards of, of doing uh, a great deal of increased uh, um, changes to an intersection. So I mean, that's I don't have to agree with it. That's just the that's just the standard that we work under. Um, <clears throat> some of the interesting things I found was the the maximum speed 500 feet from the intersection. Uh, we actually had uh, speeds at 90 miles an hour clocked last Thursday in a 24-hour period. 25% um, of the traffic either approaching or leaving the stop sign was in uh, excess of 50 miles an hour at 500 feet from the stop sign. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I agree we have a a dangerous intersection, but it's but we also have a behavioral problem. We we need to we need to figure out how to change behavior of the drivers out there in that uh, vicinity. And um, on the Feedville side, the maximum speed there was actually 87, which the side with no stop sign had a had a lower speed at 500 feet from the intersection than than the side with the stop sign. So I go, I, that one didn't, uh, and 55 um, percent. Uh, was going over 50 miles an hour with 15 percent over 60 miles an hour. So, so you know, it, um, there there are some definite issues there that that I would associate with behavioral issues that that uh, uh, certainly need to be addressed along with possibly doing some other uh, applications out there. May I ask a question? Certainly. So you're giving numbers of the amount of traffic out on Seaville and Edwards, and you're stating that the state standards are saying that we don't need any adjustments there. I'm, what I'm stating is that, that what is currently there actually exceeds the current standards. I'm not stating, I'm not saying anything about that, that I disagree or, or, or agree with, with the fact that more can be done. Cer certainly, there's always more that can be done. I'm I'm simply referring to the fact that that we have already exceeded, uh, you know, what we really what we so need to. That intersection mm -hmm. is the only intersection in the area that does not have a four-way stop. Yep. Edwards and Loop has a four-way stop. Despain Gulch Loop and Feedville has a four-way stop. First Street and Feedville has a four-way stop. Edwards and Co. has a four-way stop. What makes Speedville and Edwards such a special intersection that we can't, because all the traffic counts are going to be very similar out there. Mm -hmm. what's, this, what's the story? Act Who's fighting this? Actually, it isn't a matter of anybody fighting it. Uh, and I can only uh, address the Co-Edwards um, Co intersection because I, I that's happened since I've been here. And quite honestly, that intersection did not meet the, the level of standards in the MUTCD. The um, city of Stanfield came before the, the board and uh, actually uh, pressed, pressed the board, and the board agreed to go ahead and put a four-way stop there, as they can. They are the road authority. They can, they can certainly do that. Uh, all I'm saying is, is it did. It did not meet the standards either. The other intersections over the years, my suspicion is, is they probably didn't meet standards. There, they. It was. Those were probably also uh, more tuned towards political pressure. Uh, I, and I'm not. I'm not supporting it. I'm not. I'm. I'm only telling you. I'm answer, trying to answer your question. I'm, I'm working on getting statistics mm -hmm. from the Umatilla County Fire Department mm -hmm. of how many. Accidents have happened at those intersections of four-way stops. I'm working on that as we okay. speak. So I, Heidi, uh, oh, Heidi, you'd sent a lot of, of information, and I've looked through that. Uh, Tom, of course, has to follow what those standards are. The Board of Commissioners has the authority to, to do this. Uh, we do have people that 
don't feel there should, as you well know, don't feel we should have a stop sign on Edwards Road. Uh, that's 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 beside the point. I'd like to know what their argument is for against it. I I think they've always felt it was a, a through road and people don't want to stop. Well, and that's that that's true. Okay, so that uh, I'm I'm just trying to explain this. So so with that being said, uh, I have driven that road numerous times, and to give you an example, and, and this pretty much explains your issues too, uh, I had a meeting early yesterday morning with, uh, with the EOTech. Uh, so I went out and I spent probably an hour driving back and forth through that intersection all, all the different directions. In the time I was there, I had one person blow by me and run the stop sign on Edwards. I had a number of trucks go through that intersection, I'm assuming probably exceeding the speed limit on that, on Feedville Road. Uh, the other issue, and, and we had a deputy out there patrolling at that same time, because I met him also. Uh, as I left the intersection going north, had a car go by me exceeding the speed limit. I met it, and as I'm looking in my mirror, it went fast enough I couldn't even tell whether it was a Oregon license or Washington license. That car went through the speed went through the the stop sign. So yes, we recognize there's a problem. We're going to do something to try and solve this. But I wanted you to hear some of the information. Uh, our public works could probably explain some of the regulations better than I could because he deals with it every day. So uh, there's no way we're, we're saying that no, there's not a problem. We know there's a problem. And trying to figure out a way to deal with this is what we're trying to do today. Obviously, a stop sign is by far the most economical, and if you end up having a person going 90 miles an hour and a person going 87 miles an hour, that's one hell of a collision. That's correct. And we have studies yeah. stating that that is the speed that's traveled out there, and you can, can, you can put a police officer out there and patrol it, but I'll tell you what, the second that they're not out there, the speeds are going to go just like they are now. Yeah. And to my point, there was a county deputy out there yesterday morning, had just left the intersection not a half a mile ahead when I left and, the, and that car, the second car went through there. Well, I believe so. after Dusty's accident, they did a study and it was like 10 cars a day run that stop sign. We, yeah, we, we had, we, you're, you're correct. We had we had documentation that showed that, that there was a, at least 10 a day that couldn't have possibly stopped at the stop sign because of the speeds, <coughs> the speeds they were achieving at, at, well, at the intersections. And for us that we live out there, I mean, you do. You, we drive that intersection probably between the two of us 10 to 12 times a day between our family with going in and out of town to grab kids, in and out of town to work, and you don't know when somebody's going to stop out there because the speeds are so fast that they, I mean, they come up to that stop sign and I, half the time, I don't know how they get stopped because it's so fast. I spoke, uh, I went out to the scene of the last accident and spoke with Under Sheriff uh, Littlefield and, and Deputy uh, Roberts, who both are here today. And uh, Deputy Roberts said that he, he patrols it on a regular basis when he's there the sight of a of a of a of a cruiser will slow things down unfortunately we don't have enough personnel or enough cruisers to be able to put one out there all the time that that would be the most effective perhaps uh, and i'm speaking for deputy roberts but he said also he'd been out there at night and he says he catches one or two every time he's out there Daytimes are, are difficult times. This last accident when I was out there, it, it was in the morning. It was a very gray morning. 
the pickup that was coming from the east was light gray in color. Would have been very easy to miss. So I think what we're here today to do is to consider what the options are. Uh, I know Einstein said if you continue doing the same thing and expect different results, you're probably insane. And uh, so I think we need to probably take a look at what we can do out there. Tom, any other comments? Okay. Uh, Sheriff's Department, any comments? And I'm assuming, Deputy Roberts, you were the one I saw yesterday. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Jim Littlefield, Umatilla County Under Sheriff. I uh, certainly agree with all the comments to today. Um, you know, we do have uh, lots of uh, crashes there. We also have lots of traffic stops, and we uh, ran data for over the last three years or so. And, uh, you know, we've made at least 70 traffic stops out there. Um, in addition to the crashes, uh, we know it's a dangerous intersection and in the best conditions, uh, uh, as it shows here with uh, full daylight, sunny, uh, it's still a dangerous intersection when you, you know, you change the conditions, whether it's uh, bad weather, dark, uh, raining, snowing, um, it's, it's more dangerous. So, um, you know, in general, um, crashes uh, that law enforcement covers uh, us and uh, Oregon State Police, you ask any officer, um, you know, they dread going to these high-speed crashes because they see many things that, that most people don't want to see uh, as far as injuries to people. And we, we encourage, um, you know, us and the county to do as much as we can to address this. Uh, we would certainly support a four-way or uh, in addition to any other signage or uh, lights or anything to uh, help people be aware that there's a stop sign approaching. Uh, we know that uh, nowadays with people distracted driving, uh, you may have stop signs posted there, uh, but if somebody's not paying attention to the road uh, and or they may be from out of the area, uh, they may not necessarily know there's a stop sign coming if they're not paying attention. Um, so, uh, you know, some sort of warning prior to the stop signs uh, to get their attention uh, to the stop signs would also make sense, I think. And so, uh, uh, in short, we, we support any, anything to make the intersection uh, more safe. Um, we don't like responding to those crashes. Many times there are people that, uh, you know, from the area that we know, and, uh, and, uh, and so we just want to make sure that it's a safer intersection for everybody that goes through, whether they're from here or from, from out of the area. Okay. Any, any questions for questions? me? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. But there's a blind spot right there that they don't realize where those cars are that could be. So so even putting a flashing light, those people that are going to blow through them are probably still going to blow through them. Sure. They're going to slow up, think that they can see far enough out, right. but that it's clear, so it's too late and it's not clear. I know we talked about before uh, about the rumble strips uh, on the road, either recessed or uh, raised above the road, that would give somebody an indication physically that there's something coming up. Um, that may be another option as well to get them to, to know that there's a stop sign uh, near. So. One of the things that I did notice uh, yesterday is I was on Edwards Road traveling south toward Sandfield. Uh, I noticed coming from the east on Feedville a truck with a boom on it that is used to pull pumps. As that truck approached the intersection, it dropped out of sight. And so, as you look both directions, you can assume if you look to the right, to the west down Feedville, you have a fairly good view. But looking to the east, if you're in a hurry, you're going to assume that nothing's coming because you looked. You wouldn't see anything. Even the truck, the only thing that I saw was just a little tiny piece of the top of that mast. And of course it was laying down over the cab. But if you looked quickly, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have seen it. And that truck, as it went through that intersection, 
was obviously in quite a hurry. Yeah. So the, the pictures don't really show, but there is a little rise, uh, as you speak of, going uh, looking to the east. Um, it's slight, but it still um, some, somewhat impairs your vision. So uh, that, that is a contributing factor as well. And sometimes drivers, especially younger drivers, uh, have a problem judging speed and distance. Uh, they don't realize how, how fast the car is coming or how soon it's going to get to that intersection. Um, you have to be a more experienced driver uh, you know, to, uh, to realize that uh, things are coming quicker than they are. And uh, so, uh, again, uh, what they, we've talked about with the four ways, at the other locations, uh, we have very few crashes, and the ones that we do have uh, are usually very low speed, um, minor injury. So. But I did notice both sides of, of Edwards, uh, the stop signs are very visible. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. they're there. Sure. You'd have to be, uh, you talked about young drivers. I, sure. I'm almost afraid to bring this up. But <coughs> also, elderly drivers sure. don't have as good of eyesight sometimes, not all of us. Yeah. Or reaction time. Sure. Uh, How'd that work for you yesterday? <laughs> 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 but the reality is, elderly drivers, I know we've had an accident there that involves some older folks, too. So, uh, yeah, it, it's an issue. Certainly having adequate signage and making people aware that there are signs approaching is, is probably the best approach for us. So, okay, Thank you. A question, uh, Tom Fellows, could you speak to the matter of rumble strips? There are, prob there are a number of issues with rumble strips, but the actual rumble strip itself, which is cut into the asphalt, and um, in this application would work fine, except for the fact our asphalt structure won't stand it. We'd have to completely repave and, and uh, get a deep enough profile on the asphalt for, for those to be ground into the pavement. The raised rumble strips or speed bumps as most people refer to them as. Uh, one of the concerns uh, that has come out of uh, uh, some studies that were done and, and I've, uh, there's a, a doctor in um, Portland uh, for Portland State that puts on a lot of safety seminars and they um, uh, the issue with that is if you put in an obstruction and somebody hits it and and that causes them to fly off or to have an issue either an accident or or something uh, negative then what that does is that puts the county in a bit of a liability uh, problem because we've created a man-made obstacle so it's you know it's it you're it's a tough call so but the but the actual cut in rumble strips unless we completely read repaved the intersection uh, would be difficult, if not impossible. Thank you. Okay, other, Tom. Tom Roberts, County Emergency Manager. Uh, I'd just like to point out um, two quick items to, for consideration here. First off, um, less than a year ago, Fire District Number One started staffing Station 22 off of Diagonal Road full time with uh, a paramedic. And while while the uh, paramedic unit response time to this location is going to be substantially shorter than it would have been from the main station in Hermiston, the the issue to be considered here is that also makes the South Edwards stretch a primary route for that medic unit responding to incidents in the Stanfield Neco area. That is the same route that Commissioner Givens is discussing with the blind spot. And if you have somebody traveling along that section, heading east to west at a high rate of speed, and, and, and they don't see each other, we stand a higher potential of having an incident involving a medic unit as well. And so I want that to be uh, uh, applied in your consideration. I also would like for you to consider the fact that um, um, the cost of, of placing signage, the cost of rumble strips, the cost of, of even um, uh, additional paving to support rumble strips or lighting. Um, taking the cost of the human equation out of it, 
is going to be nothing compared to what we're going to ex uh, uh, see if we continue to have to run increased patrols, if we have to continue to uh, respond with multiple uh, rescue and, and EMS units, and to include uh, uh, aerial assets such as life flight. So when you take the cost equation into, into consideration here as well, um, I think what, what's being asked of the Commission for uh, revamping this intersection is, is going to be the lesser of those, uh, of those options. So, thank you. Tom, thanks for the comment. I, we can't put a cost on, Not on human, human life, life loss exactly. or even a human exactly. life and, and a lifetime injury. So. Yeah, totally agreed. And, that, and that's why I'm saying if you take that element out of it, you're still looking at the lesser of the uh, expenses by, by looking at upgrades. So. Right. Uh, other comments? Are you to commissioner comment yet? Uh, we're getting there. I want to be sure folks have a chance to talk and speak to this. Um, and, and the reason uh, I'm taking a little extra time here was simply because I want people to have a voice in this. So with that, okay, commissioners. I, I think one of the things I'd like to point out clearly is that at no this is a thing we've talked about for several years and at no point has a consideration ever been cost. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is that there are probably several thousand intersections in Umatilla County and we ask our director of public works to rely on industry standards uh, in making his decisions so therefore it falls to the commissioners to exceed those standards. It isn't, I don't think, would be right to ask Tom to, to make those kinds of decisions. So it's <coughs> it's up to us to, to exceed those industry standards, many of which are predicated by, by situations in other parts of the country. And one of the things that that we have always prided ourselves in in Eastern Oregon is that we are unique and and I think as commissioners it's incumbent on us to to respond to what we perceive to be local circumstances. I know a number of the people who live in that area. I know very well people who were involved in serious accidents at that intersection. Um, it's, it's unique, it's remote, uh, and I know how fast people drive there. Uh, my own family lived at the other end of the road. Um, Therefore, I think this is an instance where uh, perhaps we need to go consider going beyond uh, what are industry standards and and acknowledge that this is a serious, serious situation at that intersection. Um, when we first discussed it, I know we talked about the idea of an overhead light. I was happy to hear from uh, our director of public works that power is available to an overhead light because I would personally favor an overhead light, but I think also I would I would favor a four-way stop combined with an overhead light. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I drive the route many times a week. It's my route of preference coming from my home in Hermiston, east of Hermiston, to coming to the courthouse. So I'm very familiar with the intersection. Uh, personally, when I stop at the intersection, I not only look, I look twice to make sure there isn't any traffic coming. It's a, it's a difficult intersection. And uh, earlier I, I, I said what the definition of insanity is, and I stand by that. I think we must do something there different to get a different result. And I would, I would be favorable to a four-way stop with flashing beacon lights on the, on the approach warnings so that we give as much warning as we possibly could. My take on it, if I got the numbers right, would be uh, 5000 for the flashing lights and $1,000 for the stop sign. That's a very small cost to pay. I know that by taking this position, there will be some people who really don't agree with it. I know people out on uh, Feedville Road who want it to, to remain open and remain a two-way stop and they are not going to be happy if we change that. Uh, people who have lost lives there, their loved ones aren't happy either with the way it is. So I guess we have to take what we think is the best approach, and that would be my suggestion. Okay. Uh, when we make a change on our, our road, uh, we end up, it's required we have a public hearing, is it not, Doug? We don't have to. Okay, so this would suffice. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, do we have any kind of an order that for a four-way stop for a yes. four-way stop? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have some different ones that I have, I have one prepared for just a four-way stop and you can always add additional things if you want But at this point there are two different proposals. So not sure three well, okay. Oh, there's a lot <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have a proposal for a a four-way stop we have a proposal for an overhead light and we have a proposal for approach lights and flashing stop signs <laughs> well that hasn't been proposed yet. rumble strips <laughs> lots of different options to go there uh, are you ready for a motion I'm ready for a motion Mr. chair I move that the intersection at Edwards and feed bill be regulated with stop signs on all four approaches and that the single flashing alert be mounted on the posts approaching the stop signs. I want a second half of that. <laughs> uh, can we do the can we do the first half first? Sure. Then, uh, then I would second I would second the four way then stop. Then my motion that we create a four way stop at Edwards and Feed Bill. And I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and second. We create a four-way stop at Edwards and Feedville. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Do we need to read that order? Yeah, the order number is RD 2017-07. Okay, so it would be 2017-07 uh, uh, for that. So. Uh, and it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. I, I'm not sure <laughs> if either one of us are qualified to sit here and say, okay, approach lights are better than an overhead light. Perhaps uh, we could have a motion that our our law enforcement authorities and our, our public works director come back with additional information about the merits of either. Is, is that a motion? It was a motion. Or second it's been moved and seconded <clears throat> and we put uh, Jim and his crew on notice that they've got work to do and Tom and Tom uh, <laughs> to consider what type of additional lighting uh, either overhead or uh, mounted, on the posts. mounted on the post or both uh, will be adequate or would increase the likelihood to stop more Serious, uh, well, stop. Actually, my motion wasn't for both. It was for one or the other. Okay. In, in, in the <laughs> to, to consider, to <laughs> yeah. get together the data together so that we can make a decision on which, on which, be, which of the two options yes. is best. Yes. But it will I be agree. one of them. I agree. Okay. Other comments? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank Tom. You Thank you. Very much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. The only thing I, I would like to comment on, on on this is we don't stock all of the, the signs and the hardware, so don't expect to see this Monday morning out there because it's not going to happen that quick. We, we have <laughs> but stop we have, anyway we have to order these things and so it's so you know I just I don't want people to get the idea that that we're gonna work overtime this weekend and, and get that that done it will happen I just don't I don't want any false uh, hopes out there let's pray <laughs> let, let us pray that there's not going to be an accident in the meantime right. okay ladies thank you Okay. Budget committee appointments. Doug? Okay. Uh, do you want me to do it, Doug? Sure. Uh, due to the uh, fact that Jerry Baker is term limited, uh, it's been necessary for us to identify a replacement for Jerry uh, on our budget committee. We certainly want to commend him for his service. Um, and we like to have representation from throughout the county. So the proposal, uh, BCC 2017-070, is to appoint Beth O'Hanlon, who is the chief fiscal officer of the uh, Yuma Telemaro, <coughs> excuse me, the Intermountain ESD, to, to take his place. And I would so move. Second. Been moved and seconded uh, for the replacement for our budget committee of uh, 
Jerry Baker, B. Beth O'Hanlon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, the abstract letter, Nolan Hills Wind Energy, excuse me, facility. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, Bob Walder, planning director. So the request before you this morning is for ratification of a November 6th letter that was sent to the Department of Energy in response to the notice of intent for the Nolan Hills Wind Project. As you know, this proposed project is a 350 megawatt wind project located southeast of Echo. Uh, because of its size, uh, 350 megawatts, the application will be processed as a um, FSAC project to the Department of Energy. As a reviewing agency, we are asked to submit substantive criteria that would be required as if Umatilla County was accepting the application. So in this letter, I've gone through and addressed um, items from our comprehensive plan as well as our development code that would be required if they were to submit an application to us. And this information will be used in the next phase of the project as the applicant makes their preliminary application to FSAC, um, which that application is expected uh, later this winter, early spring. Thanks. Are there any questions about the letter or the project? Uh, did real quickly was county listed as a uh, uh, I forget the term we've done this uh, every, every year. Essentially, we're a cooperating agency. Cooperating agency um, yeah. review committee. Uh, yeah, a reviewing yeah. agency, and uh, I've participated in the preliminary calls that we've had on this project and um, we'll continue to be involved um, and keep you guys apprised of any developments. Okay. Mr. Chair, move approval of the letter. Do I have a conflict? How many of the towers do you own? <laughs> well, <laughs> we've been trying to keep you separated from this project. So. Okay, then I'll stay separated. <laughs> Okay, and I will second that motion. Uh, and do you want to stay in? Yes. So uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed and those abstaining? Aye. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the Lloyd Road engineering costs. Tom Fellows, Public Works, again. Uh, as, as the board may remember, uh, they uh, approved to move forward with the LID uh, down on Lloyd Road. Uh, and in that, we needed to get a, the cost for uh, a cost estimate done for uh, the total project so that these people can make a, a judgment on whether they, they want to go ahead and, and move forward. Um, due to, to staffing and, and time constraints, uh, the Public Works Department elected to have an cons independent consultant do this estimate. Uh, so we reached out to Anderson Perry, who we have on contract for such services, and they uh, gave me a uh, quote of $5,400. And so at this point, I'm just before the board to get approval to pay them $5,400 so that we can get this estimate and move forward. You know, we've already approved this once before to do this. The only reason it's before us, again, is it's $400 over the, the limit, which uh, since it was already approved once, I'm surprised we have to go through this. Um, but as it is, so... So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Tom, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, veteran Services Vehicle Purchase. <coughs> Who has that? Uh, I guess I will then. Um, there's anyone from... That's okay. 
uh, from the department here. So this um, previously the uh, board authorized a request for proposal to go out for three vehicles for the veteran services uh, division. Um, it was for a new or slightly used vehicle. There were five proposals received and the department is recommending to go with the lowest one which is a 2018 Ford Fusion for $17,900 from Tom Dinschel Ford. Questions? I thought it interesting that we also had a bid on a 2017 for more money. It must have mm -hmm. been more elaborately yes. equipped. Mr. Chair, I move approval of the purchase of three 2018 Ford Fusions, $17,900 each from Tom Dinschel Ford. Second. Been moved and seconded that Tom Dinschel Ford uh, is the low bidder at awarding that. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Law enforcement vehicle purchase. Morning. Dave Williams with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, this is the follow-up to a previous request uh, where we went out for bids for three of the Ford Explorer Police Interceptor packages. Um, we received, uh, when we, this went out for bids, we received two of which uh, Gresham Ford came in just a hair under Dential, so we're requesting to purchase the three vehicles through uh, Gresham Ford. Questions? Captain Williamson, I didn't see the, estimate, the bid from... Gresham Ford. I have a copy of it here if you'd like. I'd, I'd like. The uh, Reviewing the initial bids, it appears that Tom Dinsel Ford would have been the low bidder at 31800 That amount 31, was lower, but it was incomplete. We had requested that they include full vehicle tending aftermarket, um, which they did not do. They only gave us a quote for the front two windows. Can you speak to the, to the necessity of it? The factory tending is almost non-existent. The first year we ordered them, uh, they came in. I called the dealer because I thought they'd left out the tending. There was so, there barely any tending at all. Um, due to the heat, due to the transport of prisoners, the uh, transport of uh, other persons that require privacy, we like to have a darker tent on the back windows. Did, and did Dental Ford say they could not do that? No, they just didn't include it. They said that uh, factory tending was available, which we were aware, but it's insufficient. But they declined to give us a further quote on it. Would, would you speak to the safety of the tending? The safety of the tending? Yes. Um, Not the process, but the safety afforded to officers and occupants in the vehicle. Oh, it um, discourages people from viewing inside the car. It shields the officer from view, the prisoners from view. Um, occasionally we'll have witnesses that we're taking back and forth to places. It uh, keeps our equipment out of view. Um, it's just generally something we like to have. And uh, when, when it's purchased from a, from a company like Gresham Ford, do they deliver or do we have to go pick up? They deliver it. And that's at no cost. Any other comments or questions? Was the dark tinting on all windows on the bid specifications? Yes. It was, it was requested. Yes, sir, it was. Mr. Chair, I move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded that we accept the uh, Gresham Ford proposal. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the UTV purchase, are you... Oh, oh, Jim's doing that. Gosh, he's kind of earning his way today. Pardon? He's kind of earning his way today. Pardon? I said you're earning your way today. Oh, All kinds of things. Uh, we're here to uh, follow up on the uh, bids that we uh, requested and eventually received for the purchase of a uh, UTV uh, utility task vehicle, which... Uh, will be used primarily uh, to enhance our snowmobile uh, program, which we patrol. Um, we eventually, we had it open twice. Uh, first time we didn't receive any bids, we opened it again. Received uh, two bids um, from two different vendors that are both uh, local, Morrill County Grain Growers, um, which you see here. 
uh, quoted us in the vehicle that uh, meets our needs at uh, the cost you see. We received one other from a local vendor uh, for a vehicle that did not meet specs, uh, was smaller in both engine size and capacity. Uh, that other quote came in at over 29000 and so uh, Moro County Green Goers uh, gave us uh, some prices on several different vehicles. Um, they discounted uh, all the vehicles significantly and uh, came up with this cost uh, here. The, the funding comes from uh, the Sheriff's Snowmobile Program, uh, which is, uh, has grant funds uh, sufficient to cover the cost. We are anticipating some more grant funds uh, that will come in by the end of the year, uh, which will somewhat replenish the fund, and this uh, cost here does not uh, deplete the fund at all. Question. The, uh, the choice of the bids is a six-passenger? Yes. And uh, comes at an additional cost of $1,000 for each of those two additional passengers? <laughs> I uh, suppose. What's the... What frequency would, uh, how would you use this with six people? What, what, what would um, you use for In the event that we would have to do, uh, we can you also use the vehicle for search and rescue purposes. Uh, so in, in the event that we have to uh, carry more personnel uh, into a location that we can't get to with other uh, vehicles, uh, we would be able to uh, carry more personnel, more searchers per se, more equipment. Um, that, so a six passenger would meet those needs. And on the bid summaries, it indicates two of the response, uh, two of the bids as being non-responsive. What does that mean? Uh, non-responsive. I don't understand. It, okay, it means that they didn't have some of the specs. So, like the one I that see. they bid didn't have the air conditioning that they requested, and the other one didn't have a large enough engine. Mr. Chair, move approval. Second. Been moved and second. We approve the uh, uh, purchase of the. Uh, XP 1000 crew uh, from Morrill County uh, at the cost of 32878 All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. I guess I'll stay here. I think I have the next one as well. <laughs> Decontamination trailer? Yes. So uh, we have uh, currently on our campus a uh, 1998, I believe, uh, decontamination trailer. It was used in the CSEP days. Uh, it's basically a showering unit. And uh, there were two, I, I believe, that were uh, um, in our county from the CSEP program. One, uh, the county transferred in 2011 to uh, Hermiston Fire, uh, currently Umatilla County Fire. Um, and so uh, during the uh, Eagle Creek fires this year, uh, we received a request from uh, Chief Stanton, um, who was uh, part of Hermison Fire as well, um, to uh, donate the trailer to uh, Northwest Incident Management Team 6, which were uh, managing the fire uh, down in the gorge. And uh, at that time, they requested uh, the trailer. Uh, they wanted to repurpose it. They wanted to uh, convert it from a showering trailer to a, a command post. Uh, and so uh, they asked if we would be able to donate the trailer. Uh, currently, uh, it sits in our lot and has for uh, as many years as I've been here uh, without being moved. Um, it's deteriorating. Uh, we've asked local agencies, uh, including fire agencies, forest service, and whomever we could think of if they wanted uh, or needed the trailer for their purposes and have had no response from anybody. Not Nobody's interested in the trailer. Um, Hermiston Fire liquidated theirs uh, a few years ago. Uh, I, sp I spoke with uh, um, Captain Phillips, who since retired from Hermiston Fire, uh, and they liquidated theirs. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how much they got. I, I, I want to say under $5,000 um, that they either sold or exchanged uh, for the trailer uh, to some other party. And so um, we, having no use for it, <clears throat> think it can be better served. Uh, for Northwest Incident Management Team 6, who does uh, uh, regional fires. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Sheldon from, uh, from Northwest uh, Incident Management submitted a letter mm -hmm. explaining what they wanted to do with it. I think it's attached here, Doug. Yes. And uh, so they have a need. Uh, they can put it to good use. Uh, we cannot, and so we're requesting um, that they, uh, we donate the trailer to them for their purposes. We uh, not long ago purchased or re retrofitted one of our vehicles for a command. Is that correct? Yes. Could we have ever used that for that? 
or could we use it in the future? Uh, no, this particular one, I don't know that we have a vehicle large enough to pull it, for one thing. Uh, it's yeah. a very large trailer, I, uh, 27 to 30 foot long, fifth wheel, triple axle. Um, it's not something that we could use, and if we if we were to use it, we would have uh, a lot of expense in, in changing it over from a shower unit to something that we could use, much more than the cost of the trailer itself, so we, we don't have a use. Okay. Looks like it would have made a great cattle hauler for Mr. Murdoch. Well, <clears throat> you could wash the animals without even taking them out of the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, move approval of the donation. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Years of wellness fundraising. Who is doing this? Could I take a, a moment of personal privilege here as Mr. Setzer approaches and note that Alicia Southwick is with us this morning. I, we did recognitions earlier. I think I'd be remiss in not noting that she just finished her master's degree from Washington State University in the Tri-Cities and successfully defended her project and uh, I believe had some academic, academic distinction in so doing. And so it's exciting. Uh, to have you do that, Alicia. Thank you. And she probably will throttle me afterwards for having <laughs> noted it. <laughs> Mr. Setzer. Such a great academic institution, too. I tried to be modest about that. <laughs> <laughs> Buttering up the commissioners prior to our request. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim Setzer. I'm from the Umatilla County Health Department. Uh, as part of our overall modernization efforts and strategic shift to move away from strictly uh, uh, providing services to individuals to working on uh, uh, creating a healthy environment at the community level, uh, in the coming year, one of our major efforts will be the Year of Wellness, which will be a, a series of month-to-month -month themes and activities around healthy activities that uh, we want to promote and that we want to engage community partners in, uh, in our general efforts to make you, Matilla County, a place where it's easy to be healthy. Uh, and this will create a lot of community outreach. Uh, it will require a lot of messaging through media and other, other channels. Uh, it will uh, benefit greatly from active participation of community members uh, and community uh, partners and community partners outside the what, what we would consider in the health sec sector the usual suspects, not just the hospitals and the clinics, but also other uh, uh, businesses and institutions who have a, a role in and a vested interest in making Umatilla County a healthier place. Uh, we're aware of uh, there are some uh, county uh, 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 regulations or limitations on uh, county personnel soliciting donations. And we wanted just to bring this before the, uh, the commissioners to uh, uh, say that uh, as part of our efforts to develop these activities and themes, uh, we will need to raise some money. We want to do this in collaboration with our community partners. Uh, and we just want to uh, have approval to uh, uh, solicit uh, uh, support, either in-kind or cash donations from some of these partners, uh, specifically to support the year of wellness activities. And so it's, it's sort of a very targeted request. I think when we talked about this, it's more, it's not exactly like bake sales or car washes. It's more on the order of grants from from institutions with a vested interest in wellness. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. And, and uh, Principally, but not limited to ca cash donations. Sure. Uh, uh, we don't have an overall budget for this yet, but it, I, I think we're probably going to end up trying to to raise maybe twenty to twenty-five thousand uh, dollars, and these will be to support the activities we're, that we're going to be participating in and and and, and supporting. It was highly successful in Tillamook County when they did it, and there's because we have a home there. There's still residual 
benefits that have fallen out even even though the year of wellness is over. And I think there's maybe other counties too. Yeah, I think it's an exciting activity. It's an exciting initiative. It's something that uh, uh, not all of our partners will be involved in all of this sort of monthly activities or, or themes. So it would allow us to broaden the, the partnership uh, through some of these activities. And it is a, <clears throat> excuse me, it is a county project as versus a personal project where I, I think the primary thrust of the personnel issue there was going desk to desk to, to gather a collection from other people in the county. Uh, this being a county project, it's merely seeking support of that. On, on in, in support of these activities. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And it limit, limited to such. Yes, sir. Do we have a resolution or a motion, Council? Uh, is just based on the, motion. just a motion would be fine. Uh, so I so move. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks, Thanks very you. much. Oh, Nurse Ratchet will be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, Doug, the personnel policy. Well, I think uh, the Human Resources Director is oh. here to... Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer Blake, Human Resources Director. Um, before you is a new um, proposed policy, 3.16. Um, it's regarding service animals uh, in county uh, properties. Uh, the crux of this is that uh, during this time where we have more and more people using service animals to help with their ADA disabilities, uh, this helps better to find um, animals, specifically dogs in this case, uh, in county facilities. Um, this is very timely. Uh, according to our insurance company, CIS, uh, they're getting ready to put together a training on this and actually um, have reviewed this policy and asked to use some of it in their training as well as some of the examples of obstacles that we have faced. This has also been vetted through um, each of our bargaining units and it comes before you for approval. Could we uh, scroll down just a little bit on that one? No, up to the top. Uh, the copy I had here said in paragraph two that we were going to alter alter individuals, and I think it meant alert. Yeah, and it still says alerting. It said alter. Oh, but I mean, yeah, I'm just looking behind here, but yeah, it has been changed. It's been changed. Yes. And down in the uh, in the first bullet point, uh, looks like we have a redundancy there. Right, no, under no circumstances will the county allow the employee to leave the service animal to be left outside. Isn't that a redundancy? One or the other of those would have sufficed. Or in a vehicle. Allow the employee to leave the service animal to be left outside or in a vehicle. Oh, I see. To leave that service animal outside or in a vehicle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll make that change on the final version. Great. Okay. Other comments? Questions? Move approval. Second been moved and seconded that we approve the new uh, service animal uh, policy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Robert, you've waited so patiently clear through all of this. Our budget hearing, supplemental for the budget the, hearing. All those orders we have here? Yeah. <laughs> Morning, Commissioners. Robert Paul, CFO. This morning we have one supplemental budget before you. Uh, supplemental budget uh, appeared for cons um, I believe I have the wrong one Doug can I need this one yeah or better maybe this one this is an extra copy if I can get them apart Pardon me for that. Um, the uh, supplemental budget uh, appeared in the East Oregonian on November 15th for consideration today. It's Budget Order 2018-10. It's for the Human Services Fund, uh, specifically Mental Health Administration. The Mental Health Administration program requires a supplemental budget to appropriate funding not known at the adoption of the budget. This requires an increase in state revenues of $108,538 and an increase in materials and services of 
thousand five hundred thirty eight dollars questions Bill? no I have none George. okay I am ready for a motion this is a budget supplemental budget oh, oh, oh I'm sorry uh, so thank you for the staff report the hearing is op open <laughs> so uh, and with the opening the hearing all of our audience left so since there is no one here for public comment uh, any other questions from my colleagues hearing none I'll close the hearing all those uh, ready to present a so motion move. second been moved and seconded all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. motion carries okay thank you um, the CDBG uh, housing real bait uh, grant rehabilitation grant thank you uh, um, the county has been involved with the city of Pendleton and the city of Pilot Rock and Adams uh, once a couple years ago to apply for and receive a community development block grant for housing rehabilitation that was applied for received and has been successful so they now know want to do a, a second round of the this um, grant in this case though it'll be the city of pilot rock taking the link rather than the city of pendleton so it's just before the board for approval of uh, the city uh, the county's participation in the uh, grant process okay and there's and no, no liability comes back to us on it that no. was my question because I I have some kind of queasy when we have CDBG because of past history right and the county is not really involved they're not the fiduciary in this case so they would not be involved with the uh, requirements for the grant or the reporting purposes okay I'm ready for a motion so move you're the only one who signed on it so I'm comfortable so move second <laughs> been moved and seconded all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. <clears throat> I know oh okay. so here on the hook <laughs> okay thank you uh, Robert thank you uh, we are ready for uh, the executive session do we need an executive session uh, not to my knowledge okay no. then let's move to commissioners reports I can start out uh, mr. chair the uh, we completed the process of selecting a economic development coordinator and selected Gail Nelson who accepted the position and she's a very welcome addition I look forward to her being able to come to work uh, because of her commitments on her present job she has to be uh, delayed coming on board until the 1st of February and she will come and join us at that time as I said I'm looking forward to that extra help and assistance uh, wanted to let you know that another project that we've been working on and have discussed project red and I can say no more about it other than that is moving and is alive so it's coming our way uh, had a discussion yesterday with the uh, uh, Steve Christman and the uh, I don't have his name here with me but the head of their uh, UAV program and they have now got the air taxi the remote air taxi there for for testing at the Pendleton Airport that's the one I think when we went out there we saw the pictures of it are you ready to ride in it yeah uh, not quite yet as soon as they finish a few of the tests I'll be ready I have a lot of confidence in in computer assisted or computer operated vehicles just keep them off Edwards Road <laughs> they don't put them there well actually they would probably uh, be safer than if all cars were automated that'd be a safe intersection wouldn't have had to spend the money we did but it's a very good uh, discussion with him we discussed also the uh, the problem that Pendleton has in, in developing light or heavy industry and, and it's one of electrical power and we're working on some potential solutions together that that may at least bring this to a focal point that something could happen so I was pleased with our meeting we had a very good meeting there and uh, I'm looking forward to continued work with with that project up there it's very exciting okay anything else nope that Dick skirt nope uh, just so you know I'm on my way down to uh, meet with the A&D staff and then I'm going to have meet with Dan Doran and then I'll come back 
Okay. And how soon do you leave for Seattle? Oh, the well, Apple I, Cup? No, I won't go near Husky Stadium. No. <laughs> <laughs> However, should they prevail on Saturday, do know that I will be going to San Francisco next weekend. Okay. All right. Uh, the uh, AOC, that went well, as we all know. So it's now on the record that it did go quite well. Uh, I've been given a, or was sent a, I guess it's an order or an ordinance put together by Jackson County. Jackson County has since dropped out of, or they had dropped out of AOC. Uh, they chair one of the forest advisory committees uh, that is involved in with AOC. And there is some discussion at AOC's level. We've got other counties asking why they're being allowed to be a part of that. But they do belong to the affiliate organizations, that being one of them. They just don't uh, belong to AOC in, as an overall uh, organization. Uh, I will be leaving this afternoon for Thanksgiving vacation. Uh, have a meeting with Robert and with uh, uh, Lewis Key on questions about uh, payments and funding for the URIS grant committee. Uh, there's some confusion there that we need to talk about. Uh, Ott Road and Airport Road. We found out that Umatilla County does not or is not listed to get that money. That is going to the city of Hermiston. And they're the ones that are listed as a lead agency for those dollars. Those aren't city streets, are they? Those are not city streets. So we're working out a, a, that issue with the city of uh, Hermiston. We cannot understand why they were listed as a recipient lead agency. It doesn't yeah. doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, Wouldn't it be necessary for us to give it to them? We could you could transfer jurisdiction for it. We uh, could uh, we could do from, that. They all don't the way want from it. Three ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd give you a motion. <laughs> <laughs> So I'd be happy uh, to. I'm working with uh, <laughs> with Byron uh, and Tom on how we can best do that. Uh, however, it will take ODOT saying, "Okay, we'll substitute county for the city of Hermiston as the lead." Who, who said the grant was made? The city of Hermiston was it Hermiston or no? Was it ODOT. Was ODOT. In talking with uh, Representative Smith, he specifically said that that was a a allocation for Umatilla County, and so this is quite a surprise. Well, it was a surprise yes. to all of us. Wow. So we're working on all the little details with that. That is but, giving them the road an option. Uh, I, my understanding is after the improvements, then like we would any street, they would like to take that over, but not ought. So, and there are some other issues with with Airport Road that may involve uh, right-of-way issues because residents have encroached on airport, as we well know, and we have some fences and possibly one or two outbuildings that are partially in the right-of-way. The fence on the northeast corner, I know, was not... It was specifically cited off the, off of it. On Isn't the northeast. Northeast, the, the white fence. Oh, okay. I'm not. So I'm not sure, but. Because I know they asked before they put it in. They asked about it, and Tom went out and spoke with them. Yeah. So it shouldn't uh, be. It shouldn't be that. Also, another note on Ott Road is that there's consideration being made to obtain the enough right of way to extend the airport at Hermiston, and yes. so that that involves the city as well. Yeah, which would mean that uh, whatever improvements we do to Ott, once those are done, then the, I guess it's the FAA, Yes. once that's approved for the airport, they will have to make the road, when we change it, 
they've got to put the money up to yes, put it back. The to, FAA does. To what its standards are, which means that if it's gravel road, it's it's our problem. If we put a surface, a hard surface on, even if it's just a chip seal, then they will bring it back to a paved surface. I see. Surface meeting the standards of the city's streets. Very so, good. Very good. Uh, hopefully that doesn't run into problems. So uh, that was the only thing I had. Uh, Robert, anything you want to bring up to the board today? No, don't. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Here another other business. Uh, we are adjourned. Sorry, I was trying to think of something.